Hi guys, Bran here. At least the last time I checked out was Bran. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, something pretty uh, unique and interesting, and that being boop, uh, there was a Reddit thread that came out on Dead by Daylight uh, official Reddit uh, recently that is covering the Xenomorph and any changes or buffs they need to be more fun to play as and against. And this Reddit thread uh, took off and got a lot of traction, so much so that a lot of you guys are sending it to me. Uh, a lot of you sent it to me yesterday. A lot of you are sending it to me today. So I thought it would just be pertinent to make a video about it, talking about some of the uh, like the top ideas here, kind of the main gripes people have with the character and things I think as somebody who is top five on the character wrote the guide and how I feel about these things. So first off, I just want to talk about here at the top. Um, Crawling Mode having an undirectional Teradius. Uh, we are going to cover this. I actually made a video about this recently, talking about why the Xenomorph is misunderstood. And there's a lot of you guys provided a lot of really good feedback on things that you think would make the Xenomorph more fun and more interesting. And one of them is being kind of the, just their general lack of stealth ability. So adding something, whether that be uh, the motion trackers only work top side or some sort of way that the Xenomorph can actually utilize and take advantage of their stealth. Because it, it, it's like if Myers had no ability to stalk people from far away, even though that's like the character's main thing that they do in the entire franchise of Halloween, <laughs> which is stalk people down and then kill them. Um, Xenomorph is known for running around the vents and hiding and jumping out last second and surprising people. I mean, that's we made an entire lovely and amazing game called Alien Isolation about that very thing. So it's kind of integral to the character's identity, but in Dead by Daylight, uh, it's not so much a thing. You get kind of a aspect of that with tracking people through the tunnels, using the footstep reading and the sound reading in the tunnels. But uh, overall, they don't really have the ability to sneak up on people because the motion sensor on the flame turrets is 41 whopping meters, which is a, a lot. <laughs> that is huge. That is bigger than Wesker's Terradius. Uh, for reference, if you need like a like an in-game visualizer, I believe that Ormond uh, on its shorter side is like the Ormond main building is 25 meters long. So imagine almost two Ormonds wide. That is how much around the survivors can hear you coming, which is wild. Absolutely wild. That is a, a long distance to be able to be uh, heard coming for a really long time. Yeah, adding some sort of aspect of, of integral stealth to the character would be nice. Uh, also, uh, obviously, there we have the infamous cat carrier <laughs> add-on, which is useless for this reason as well. Um, uh, an idea that I saw in here, kind of looking at some of these, is that... Uh, Xenomorph specific uh, undetectable should be treated different uh, than normal undetectable. So like if they're undetectable because of the tunnels, if they're undetectable because of hat carrier, that should function as like a separate undetectable than like the usual normal undetectable status. That way something like the motion sensors don't like, you know, pierce through it and that sort of thing. I think that was a good idea and would give the Xenomorph something specific and make them a fairly unique stealth killer, which would be interesting. Um, I'd be down for that. I think that'd be cool to try in a, a, a PTB. The second thing here that I already see is base kit self-destruct bolt. I don't think so. Self-destruct bolt is really, really strong and one of their top three add-ons. Uh, and it's very, very impressive, especially when used with Bamboozle. This character is already like an A, B tier character, like if used in the right hands. So giving them just free vault speed for like no other reason than just cause is really, really strong. It's really, really strong. Some characters have just inherently good vault speed like Myers, but Myers is a bottom three character so it's not necessarily as egregious so giving a character like xenomorph a uh, uh just a free vault speed would be really really strong and i and usually the response to this is like well nurse can link through walls dude so like why can't we give xenomorph this i don't think we should be looking for characters like nurse that actively bottleneck design as the reason we should add something <laughs> i i do not think looking at the top three characters that often bottleneck design should be something we should use as a rationale to buff characters yeah, let's let's we should move away from those character designs, not try to, you know, get closer to them. This one, I don't quite understand. Uh, I think just besides the aesthetics, it's neat. But like the ability to toggle back and forth between Qualler mode and normal mode, you have to give normal mode some sort of like advantage or something to that extent. Um, I'm not sure what you could do with that because you still want it to be that the flame turrets and we'll get to that <laughs> the flame turrets uh you still want the flame turrets and the counterplay to be useful so if you just make it okay to be in uh normal mode without any sort of like meaningful drawback that kind of makes it like all that counterplay the survivors have to put in kind of useless so you can't make cr uh, the normal mode better or equal to crawler mode but Maybe you could have some sort of like special flourish with that that, you know, changes your gameplay style, but not in a way that's better than the crawler mode. This is kind of like the main thing that I've seen. This is probably the, going to be the, the meat and potatoes of this uh, conversation is that most people agree in the in the comments that um, 
<laughs> the, the flame turrets are too oppressive. And this is a hard one to digest because it, it essentially goes into two camps here. The first being, uh, I'm bad at taking care of the turrets, so the turrets are too oppressive. And I'm good at taking care of the turrets, but I feel like they're still too annoying anyways. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell because I don't know the background of these players. I don't know their experience with the character. Um, for me, uh, taking care of the of the turrets besides like a, a four man swift that is actively on comms, actively try harding, actively always leading you back into two turret setups. Uh, you should not be in situations like some of these Redditors are saying that you are spending most of your game out of your power. Um, I would argue if you are spending most of your game out of the power, you are doing a poor job of dealing with the turrets. Either you are actively not choosing to ru ever run any sort of anti-turret add-on, you're not choosing to blow up turrets the moment that you see them, and you're trying to get greedy and run past them. But uh, I've, a lot of people just kind of don't take uh, taking out the flame turrets very seriously, and it comes back to haunt them. And it's probably when people submit match reviews for the Xenomorph, the number one gameplay mistake that I see is that people consistently ignore the turrets, and then they go surprise Pikachu face and complain um when they get knocked out of the power they have to spend most of the game out of their power so i, I just find it I, it's hard to have this conversation straight because like uh, to a certain extent it is a skill issue not fully not fully i'll say that let's make that better clear it's not fully a skill issue but to a large extent it is a skill issue um, a lot of people had very, very similar feelings about Singularity when Singularity first came out, uh, that the character is just not worth playing, he's just too much effort for no reason, the MPs feel too oppressive, uh, but, you know, people that actually wanted to invest and get better at the character found ways to deal with these things, and even before his quality of life buff, there were some very, very awesome, very, very strong Singularity mains that made the character look like, uh, like a top 10 character because they were playing them so well, and they had, you know, rode that skill curve and found a way around the built-in counterplay. So I feel like Xemorph is in a similar situation where a lot of people uh, are still in that zone of, oh, well, this is just dumb and I just don't want to deal with this. <laughs> so um, they just don't put in the effort to learn, um, which sucks because uh, that that does paint a more unhealthy, not great uh, picture uh, of the character just because of an unwillingness to learn. Uh, however, there is another side of this argument, which is that, yeah, uh, I know how to deal with the turrets. I just find it annoying, <laughs> which is totally valid. That is totally valid. Even if you know how to deal with the turrets appropriately and and get them out of the way. Uh, I, I, one thing I often hear um, is that the Xenomorph is also extremely like overstimulating because of the turrets being so loud and annoying and in your face and all the visual effects that get all over your screen. Um so there's a lot that can go into people like knowing how to deal with them and then just not enjoying deal with them. And I think that's a valid thing. I don't think that we should take this as a we need to nerf turrets. Uh, I don't think that's the takeaway we should have here. I think the takeaway should be uh, making kind of like with the um, singularity thing, making some of the rougher edges of the character nicer to deal with. That way, the flame turrets are kind of just part of the experience and not something like this person says of where it's kind of like a uh, like a dictation of the gameplay. Like it takes part in the flow of a match, but it's not like, you know, constantly present, constantly always causing issues. If you have other good parts of your kit that feel nicer in terms of a quality of life perspective that make interacting with them better. This is the other big thing that I've seen with this, the the pretty uh, large comment that I see a lot on a lot of these, pretty frequent, not large, pretty frequent comment I see on a lot of this is that the cooldown for the tail attack uh, is really bad. It's not actually the cooldown. The cooldown is actually only 0.3 seconds away from a normal basic attack. Uh, normal basic attacks are 2.7. Uh, the tail attack itself is three seconds of cooldown. Um, would I still like those to be the same? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what they're actually talking about here is the movement speed penalty, because that's what makes it feel bad. The cooldown is actually not too terrible. The movement speed penalty, which is not be really being brought up, is the thing that's actually causing the issues. Uh, you can slow down when you technically miss a tail attack so that anything that does not hit a survivor uh, results in a movement speed penalty of 1.2 meters a second, which is really, really slow. Uh, and the reason for that is because in the uh, PTB for the character's release, they were extremely oppressive because they were just like two tap you so quickly you couldn't do anything. So even if you missed, you just catch up in like two seconds and like immediately down the uh, survivor. So they made it to where missing was super punishing. Um, so despite the fact that, you know, 
obviously there's a skill curve to this as well and learning to hit that and getting good at that that way you're not suffering as many of the instances where you're suffering that movement speed penalty as possible um the, 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 as you've probably seen if you watch my streams uh <laughs> collision of dead by delight is not very um coherent a lot and with how chunky your hitbox is as the xenomorph if you're going to be hitting things that you didn't aim at a lot um and getting snagged on collision here there and all over the place even sometimes you'll aim directly at the survivor but because your tail attack hitbox slightly hit the pallet right before hitting the survivor everything's gone because it's not like nemesis where you can keep going um so in theory yeah not missing would help a lot but in practice um dvd is not a perfect game so bad things happen <laughs> and then it feels bad if we are going to be shifting or lowering that movement speed penalty um the response for me and what i would want to do with that if, if that has to go through if it has to go through that we're shifting the movement speed penalty and we're making it either gone or less i want to add that time to the windup because that is one of the survivor's main complaints about this character is that the windup is 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 way too short uh to the point where a lot of people do, do not believe it actively exists <laughs> and this is something that i fight with people about almost every single time i post one of these videos is like bro there's no windup or bro it the, the windup is really short it's actually only the charge time and it, it's just misinformation but um but either way it, there's a clear sentiment regardless of how specific we get about it that people don't like that the xenomorph does not have a very long windup time and has one of the hardest to react to attacks in the game that is not something that survivors enjoy uh and killers don't seem to enjoy the movement speed penalty for missing so it seems like a like a like a kill two the two birds one stone thing uh where maybe we either lessen or remove the movement speed penalty and then add that to a windup so there's like a clear tell that this is coming something more like huntress dracula deathslinger etc but missing isn't as penalizing and doesn't feel as bad at the very least so you, the, the survivors get more counterplay and the killer uh does not feel as bad when they miss and so they feel better to learn a lot of people are suggesting some pretty out there and wild things, which I'm sure is not surprising considering if you've watched any of these videos before, like he should have face huggers. He should be able to just pounce over pallets. Like, yeah, we did. We tried that with manual scamper with Chucky and it was awful. And <laughs> so much that it got taken out. That's not happening. Uh, so kind of like the, the unfortunate, um, <laughs> Xenomorphs should just be able to be like the top three killer and just do everything in the universe. People are kind of coming out of the word work and like, trust me, this is my favorite horror franchise, but I don't think you should have all of those abilities. Um, I feel like that would be uh, way too, <laughs> way too much, obviously. So um, obviously I would prefer not to go uh, that route with that. The final thing that I would actively want to change instead of just like responding to all of these suggested changes uh, is that the like kind of briefly mentioned the collision in the game is not very uh <laughs> not very good uh there's even instances uh if you've gone to like greenville square there's that uh, picnic table that has a uh, collision to the sky for some reason it's the one with the blue cooler i don't know why it just does <laughs> but there's little instances of like inaccurate collision everywhere in dead by daylight um and especially with your hitbox being as chunky it is as, as the Xenomorph, it creates a lot of bad situations. So I would prefer to have some sort of uh, collision pass, similar to what they did with uh, Bubba and Hillbilly, that made it to where they don't bump as often. Uh, that way that, you know, when you get screwed over by bad collision, it doesn't feel as bad. So in, in summary, in summary, the things that I think would be valid changes for Xenomorph, uh, matching their tail attack uh, cooldown to the base attack cooldown, makes sense to me. Um, Having some sort of uh, additional uh, Teradius uh, undetectable treatment for them specifically when they are interacting with their tunnels or like an add-on like Cat Carrier that does not get tracked by the motion sensors. That way that they are kind of like their own unique stealth killer over here uh, with like their own kind of like separate effect uh, that kind of uh, deals with the unfortunate thing that the motion sensors are just really, really strong in the flame turrets. Uh, but also does not kind of step on too many toes of other uh, stealth killers and gives you uh, a more immersed feeling while playing as alien. Uh, three, if we're going to remove the movement speed penalty, uh, giving the tail attack itself more of a windup would be great for making survivors actually enjoy facing them because there's a little bit more of a tell that the tail attack is coming uh, and also does not feel as bad to miss on the other side. Yeah, what do you guys think? Did you guys see this thread today? And what did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments below. But other than that, that's going to be it for today's video friends thank you so much for watching but i do upload daily so i will see you tomorrow but if i do not i will see you when i see you goodbye